What if I told you that you could securely connect your EC2 instances in AWS without the need for public access, a bastion host, VPN, or long-term credentials? In this video, we're gonna take a look at just that. Now, what we're doing here today is we're creating an AWS IAM role, attaching an IAM policy that then grants the privileges or the AWS actions that are allowed to enable our AWS role to connect the EC2 Instance Connect endpoint service. This endpoint service will then allow us to connect to an EC2 instance in a private subnet of our virtual private cloud, or VPC. Now, while this diagram is a bit high level, you can see there is no internet gateway. There is there's no NAT gateway, meaning this EC2 instance is completely limited to being on the internal network. There's no internet connection inbound or outbound. Now, even once we build this EC2 instance connect endpoints, it's only going to allow our role to connect to the instance. Our instance still will not be able to access the internet. So that's just something to keep in mind. With that being said, let's jump into our AWS console and start to build. Now, once we're in AWS, we'll click on IAM here, and we're going to go ahead and go to roles, create role, and then custom trust policy. Now, the custom trust policy will look like this. Now, all you have to change here is just make sure that this ARN is a user within your AWS account. Once that's done, go ahead and click on next. And then we need to attach or create a policy. In our case, we'll create a policy. Click on JSON up here, and then I'll paste in the policy. So all you have to know is that these are the permissions up here that you need to connect to our EC2 instance connect service, as well as our EC2 endpoint. And then I have Cloud Shell down here, just so I can show you how to connect via the Cloud Shell within the console here. Once you're done with that, click on next, and then we need to give it a policy name. So this is my policy name up here for EC2 Instance Connect policy. I'll come down here and click on Create Policy. Now that our policy is created, let's go back up here to our IAM, refresh this page, and then we should see our new policy right here. Go ahead and check that box, scroll down, click on next, and then we need to give it a role name. Again, I like to be fairly descriptive, so EC2 Instance Connect role, and then we can see our trust policy here that we've created, as well as our new permissions policy. Once that's done, click Create Role. Now flipping back to our architecture diagram, we've now created an AWS role and attached an IAM policy. The next thing we need to do now is build out our VPC in our private subnet. So let's go back to the console and start doing that. We'll click on VPC up here, click Create VPC. We'll choose to do VPC only in this case. We'll give it a name. Internal apps VPC is mine. Give it a CIDR range here. Mine is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And this is all we need to do. We'll scroll down and click on VPC. So now that our VPC is created, let's go over here to subnets and we'll create our first subnet. Click on create subnet up here at the top and then make sure that we select the new VPC that we've just created. Mine's internal apps. We'll scroll down, we'll give this a subnet name. Again, I like to be descriptive with my subnets. Internal apps private is the VPC it belongs to. This US East 1A is the region and the availability zone that I'm selecting here. Next, we need a CIDR block, and that is the one I'm using, 10.000 slash 24. From here, we'll create subnet because we just need the one subnet. Flipping back to our architecture diagram, we've created the VPC, we've created the private subnet, and now we need to create the security groups. So let's go back to the console, click on security groups here underneath security, go up to create security group. We'll give the security group a name along with a description which allows inbound SSH. Make sure to select your VPC that you've just created right here. We'll click on add rule under the inbound rules here. Go ahead and select SSH, custom. I'm going to do anywhere IPv4, but you can also do your IP which will only allow connection from your IP. Again, a description here, allow inbound SSH. We can scroll down here, leave everything else default, and go ahead and create that security group. Now up next, we're creating our VPC endpoint. So we'll come over here to endpoints, go up to create endpoints, and then make sure that you've selected EC2 instance connect endpoints. I'm going to give it a name here, EC2 instance connect endpoint to my internal apps, or in other words, my EC2 instances that will spin up later. Scroll down here to VPC. Make sure you've selected your new VPC there. Down here on security groups, we need to make sure that we have the one that we've just created right here. And then in the subnet down here, we need to make sure we've selected the one 
that we've just created. Now we can go ahead and click on create endpoint. So this endpoint is going to take a couple minutes to spin up. So while we wait, let's go ahead and open up the EC2 section in a new tab here, and we'll start creating our EC2 instances. Click on launch instance here. I'll be giving it a name of server one. Now down here under the AMI, we need to make sure that we've selected the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. This one for sure is compatible with the EC2 instance connect service. Not all of the other AMIs are compatible with this service. So it's something to keep in mind. We can scroll down here. The instance type is totally fine there. The key pair, we're not gonna need a key pair because we're using the EC2 Instance Connect feature. Down here for the network settings, click on edit here. Make sure we've selected our new VPC. Make sure our new subnet is selected as well. And then we'll create a security group. Now this is the security group that will be attached to this EC2 instance, otherwise known for me as internal app security group. For the description here, I will say allow traffic from our EC2 instance connect endpoint because I don't want to connect to this instance in any other way. So under the security group rule, make sure you have SSH selected here, TCP 22, and then instead of the source type of anywhere, we'll come down and click on custom. Then our source is going to actually be the new security group that we created for our EC2 endpoints. As a description, I'll just say allow traffic from the EC2 endpoints. Everything else can remain as default. We'll click on launch instance. Now, while this instance is spinning up, we can go back to our endpoint and make sure that the status is now available. We're still pending here, so we'll give it a couple more minutes. Now, once your endpoint is available, we're good to go. Let's switch back to our diagram real fast. So we've created that role, attached the IAM policy, we've set up the VPC, the subnet, the security groups, the instance connect endpoint, and now we are ready to connect to our EC2 instance. So what we're gonna do is click on IAM, click on roles, find the one that we've just created here, ECIE role for me. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this ARN. And then from there, click this drop down here, switch role, Switch roll again. Now what we'll do here is I'm gonna paste that ARN. We actually just need the AWS account number. So just make sure you have the account number there. And then for the role, we just need the name of the role. So in my case, ECIE role. And then the display name, we can go ahead and leave that um, as default. So we'll go ahead and click on switch role here. And now, as you can see, we are the ECIE role. We're gonna have some permission errors here because we have limited access. Our access was to connect to the EC2 instance via the instance connect. So go ahead, find your instance, select this box here, and then we can go ahead, click connect up here and then we will do the EC2 instance connect. So you're going to get this warning message. We can ignore it. We don't have a public IPv4 address attached to this instance because we are using an instance connect endpoint. So make sure that this box is selected here. And then down here, we'll select our endpoints right here. Go ahead and click on connect. And as you can see, we are now connected to our EC2 endpoint. So that's how you connect via the console. However, we have also granted access for this role to Cloud Shell. So we're gonna connect via the CLI to this instance as well. What we do need here though, is we need to get the instance ID, which is going to be this right here. So I'll copy that there. We'll go back to the CLI, and then we'll use this command right here, AWS EC2 instance connect SSH instance ID, and then our ID for the instance. Go ahead and click on enter, and we should be able to connect via the CLI like so. Type in yes here, and as you can see, we are also connected via the CLI. So great job on setting this up today. We have now created a way to connect to internal AWS EC2 instances that is far more secure than something like a bastion host, long-lived credentials, et cetera, et cetera. As always, thanks for watching.